Hey guys, RC here, back with another RC Reacts to today's Chelsea versus Leeds match. Not a good day for the for the good guys. Uh, Leeds falling three to one to Chelsea. Not so much losing to Chelsea; it's losing to Fat Frank, of course, uh, who I don't like. And a dagger in the heart as uh, fellow American Christian Pulisic put one into the net in the 93rd minute. <sighs> Taking a look at the starting lineups, uh, we went with uh, Meslier in goal, Elioski Cooper, Robin Koch, Ailing on the back line, Phillips and Dallas in the midfield, Harrison, Rafinha on the wings, and Klitsch in the attacking spot with Bamford up top. The big news was Robin Koch got hurt early in the match and had to be subbed off. Uh, but we did, on, on a positive note, uh, we did get our first look at Diego Llorente, uh, the Spanish international, the fellow Spanish international to Rodrigo. Uh, he came on, and then uh, Jan Paveda came on for Jack Harrison, and Rodrigo came on for Elioski. But not a good, not, yeah, I say not a good game. At the end of the day, I think we have to look at this and be level headed and realize it's our first year up. We've been in the championship for 16 years, we have not been a top flight club for over a decade and a half. And we are playing way above our weight right now. We are doing very well. But it shouldn't be a surprise when we get outclassed by one of the premier sides. And there's no arguing that Chelsea is a premier side. They've put together a very good team. And uh, they've gone top of the table with the win today. And I don't have anything particular against Chelsea. Uh, but I don't like their manager. And that's where my my hatred for the club ends. But we got outclassed today. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Let's take a look at the stats, and then we'll kind of talk about the game. We were, you know, we have been very good at creating chances. The last handful of matches, we're averaging over twenty shots a game in our last two wins, and we only managed eight today, compared to twenty three for Chelsea. Uh, they had a 10 to 3 advantage on shots on target and we didn't dominate the possession we still won it but we didn't dominate that or passing like we normally do passing accuracy was 81% significantly lower than we average so they were just better than us today ball handling ball movement one touch passing even as fit as we are, there were a couple of runs by some of the Chelsea guys that just, they blew us off the field. I mean, they were, they were getting wide open runs on the flanks uh, with, our, with our backs. Uh, Elioski, Ailing being pushed up in the attacking like we play, and we're not going to change that, but we were really caught open. Uh, the first goal, Jack Harrison got caught up. He was about... 10 yards in front of his his mark because we play that man marking system and he collapsed back to kind of double team uh, I think it was with Elioski and the player that had the ball did a did a pass out to Harrison's mark that was making a run and he had just a perfect run Harrison got tangled up with the other player and couldn't stay on his man making that run, and he got the cross in. And uh, who was their striker uh, that got the first goal? Uh, Gerard. Gerard. Uh, just a class, you know, toe on the ball into the net. Uh, we got really lucky. I mean, we had a really great first goal. Uh, it started off great with Bamford getting his eighth goal of the season. Should have been his ninth, except for that uh fictitious offsides call earlier in the season that VAR re uh, reversed. But, you know, Bamford is a pressing forward. Girard is a out-and-out -out poacher. And, you know, he showed some deadly accuracy. Of course, they were talking he got the start today, getting the four goals uh, in the one international match recently. 
And then, honestly, late in the game, you know, the second half, they just took over. And it wasn't a fitness issue because Leeds pushed all the way to the end. But they were they were right there with us. They didn't give up a step. And as I said, they just showed with the width of their attack, the accuracy, the pinpoint accuracy of their passes uh, just beat our press every time and gave them a lot of runs into the goal area. And now here's something to think about. It wouldn't have changed the outcome of this game in all likelihood, but there was a uh, play with Jan Paveda in the second half where he was uh, kind of hit in the box. He was making a run through the penalty area, and he took a hit. But unlike Elioski, who took that soft headbutt last week, and and went down. Basically, he pulled a Grealish, uh, as I like to call it. Uh, he went down and drew the foul and the card on the other player. Paveda, to his credit, uh, manned up, fought through the hit, and stayed on his feet. But even the announcers were saying, look, we don't condone diving, but if you don't go down, the referee is never going to call a foul, especially on a penalty or a potential penalty in the box. Basically saying you've got to dive if you want to try to draw a foul. The difference between that and doing a Grealish is Grealish, you blow on him and don't even touch him and he falls down. And he'll fall down five minutes after uh, something may happen. And Villa fans can be delusional and think that doesn't happen, but it does. Boy, it started off so well. When Bamford scored that goal, I was so excited, and I thought we were going to take take them to the cleaners today. But, again, they, they hung with us. They got the goal back. And then in the second half, honestly, all I can boil the game down to is their skill showed through. And we had a few, you know, we had a few attempts – uh, Rodrigo came on. It was good to see him back on the pitch, but you could kind of tell he was a little rusty from not playing recently. In fact, you know what? I wanted to look. Yeah, Hernandez was not on the bench again. Now, supposedly he is injured right now. The bench looks real. I mean, Paveda, Llorente, Costa, Rodrigo, Stroik. That's a strong bench for us compared to what we've been used to having. So... But we just, in my opinion, we just got outplayed. Just got outplayed. And they were the better side and deserved to win. Doesn't mean I'm happy about it, but that is how I'm going to call that. So you've seen the stats. Take a look at the standings. Chelsea goes top of the table. Uh, Leeds drops to 13th. Uh, still with 14 points from 11 matches. We're going to be fine. We're not going to be fighting relegation this year. Uh, and that, honestly, is all I think we need to be worried about. Any any hopes of qualifying for, for Champions League or Europa League or, or anything else, I think is perfect world scenario. And it could still happen. But mid-table, I would be – if you could guarantee me – 13th pos position at the end of the season, I would take that today. I would take it today, and we could end the season, and I'd be happy. Uh, but, you know, that is what it is. If we take a look at the upcoming slate of games for Leeds, uh, we, we have West Ham at home, Newcastle at home, and then we travel to Man City. And then we follow up with another home game at Burnsley. Now, sadly, it was nice seeing fans in the stands today with the tiered thing that, that England is doing. Unfortunately, Leeds, of course, is in that tier three or phase three and won't be able to have any fans at Ellen Road. Very disappointed in that. Hopefully, over the next few weeks, that maybe changes. I don't know how often the government over there is going to be looking at things and reevaluating that and reclassifying clubs. Of course, being a Leeds fan, it would not surprise me if they reclassify only the teams that play Leeds as, you know, on the road. 
<laughs> so like Manchester might not be allowed fans, but then the week of the man's man United game, maybe they're allowed fans in for the match that. And then the following week they're reclassified again and can't bring fans. That wouldn't surprise me in the least. And that's just, uh, you know, the, the leads attitude kind of shining through there. But I think we've got three very winnable games and then one game that we could that we could steal some points in. Uh, you know, they're not playing great this year. You know, they've won four on the bounce. So, you know, they've kind of found their form, gotten in, gotten in a good run, and, you know, starting to score a few goals. So it's going to be, you know, that's going to be a tough one. So if I've got to call it, I'm going to say a loss to Man United, uh, although I hope that that doesn't transpire. And then hopefully three wins in those other three games. So uh, nine points from 15 possible, counting today's match. And nine more points puts us at 21, which is halfway to that magic number. And well over 50% of the games left to play at that point of the season. So looking forward to your comments. I'm not going to play any highlights today because uh, my video did get shut down last week for a little while and I had to edit out the highlight. So uh, thank you, NBC and YouTube, for doing that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I enjoyed the match today. It was a fun match to watch, much like last week's. But, you know, you could definitely ch tell Chelsea is a different side from what, what Everton is. And... You know, we we got the uh, you know we took it on the chin, but we'll rebound. You know, I don't think the boys are going to lose any anything. You know, in in form or or motivation from this match. And on the flip side, a I hope Robin Koch is healthy next week. I'd like to see. You know, I definitely want him in the starting lineup. And Urente. He didn't play badly, but he did give up the goal. Uh, he did give up a goal and had a couple of uh, really shaky-looking pass-outs from the back. But I warrant that to being his, his debut for the club. You know, going through that learning curve that, you know, Robin Koch had to go through in his first couple of matches. So, But you have to admit, it was very, very nice that we lose a German international to an injury and we're able to bring on a Spanish international to take his place. That was brilliant. And then bring on another Spanish international off the bench. You know, it just shows the leaps and bounds that Victor Orta and the club have made in one transfer window. So, by the way, the next transfer window is about four weeks away. Let me know in the comments, are you guys expecting Leeds to do any more business? I'm really not because they have always taken the stance that the January transfer window is very tough. There is not a lot of quality out there. And what quality there is, is seriously overvalued by selling clubs and cost buying clubs more money than if they'd buy it in the off-season window. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't go out and maybe look at a midfielder, which I think is still a position of need. And the only change I would make to the club, Elioski has played really well lately, but I think he got exposed today, and I think that's why he got pulled off as early as he did. I think Dallas moving back to left back, which... He has been very solid last year and this year at left back. And then putting Rodrigo in at the attacking midfield. Now, this saying we played a 4-4-1-1 today, which I know there was one point we were we looked like we were in a five-back set. I don't know that we've ever played a 4-4-1-1 against anybody under Bielsa. Uh, usually he plays the, you know, the 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, or he plays the, and, and that's probably what this was. Phillips was more of a holding 
and Klitsch playing more in a, in that midfield slot. So that would be more of a 4-1-4-1. But we also moved to a three-back, but you know, playing three up top, this is our first time, I think, going against a, a 4-3-3. So maybe that is a tactical change that Bielsa pulled out of the hat. But he doesn't seem to be one to deviate much from his norms. So anyway... The the club looked really solid. I saw Cooper make a few mistakes, but he made some really good plays. Uh, Koch looked really, you know, pretty solid until he got hurt. And then, uh, you know, Urente looked good. He didn't, you know, he needs to get his legs under him. But he did make some mistakes. At least one led to a goal. Ailing and Alioski. Ailing was called off sides, I think, twice or once, and Rafinha was called off once. But uh, Alioski and Ailing were both caught out of position defensively. Harrison got got played bad on defense that one play, and probably Harrison's worst game I've seen him play, which, you know, everybody's going to have an off day. They didn't put Phillips under as much pressure as I thought, that they would, you know, and he looked as solid as ever. But, you know, if you notice, he plays a lot of short passes. He doesn't really, you know, he builds up his passing percentage with a lot of short stuff that's easy and uncontested most of the time. So take that with a grain of salt. I thought Bamford looked class on his goal. He had two other opportunities, um, just couldn't convert them. And, uh, you know, we just took it on the chin today. But at least it was against a top-of-the-table side and not against a relegation or bottom-half-of-the-table team. You know, these are the games that you would hope if you're going to lose. These are the ones that you hope are going to be in that group. So that's the that's the silver lining that I look for today is that, you know, this was a game that we probably should have lost, and we did. So, you know, it doesn't hurt us in any way, shape, or form in the duration of the season. But let me know what you guys think. Of course, I wish Leeds would have won. I wish we could have, you know, laughed at Frank Lampard after the game, but we can't. So we'll move on and uh, hopefully build up uh, some wins and get some points under our belt uh, in this next run of games heading uh, up to... Christmas and Boxing Day and the end of the calendar year. Guys, have a good one. We'll see you next time here on RC Reacts. Take care. Bye.